Hey guys, what's going on? It's this kid and we're going to go over the Subtlety Rogue Mage Tower Challenge. Again, the point of my Mage Tower videos is to make it pretty easy to understand. I don't want to get too technical and I also don't want to make it seem like you need these triple gem slot items to get this done. I understand that most people are just trying to get the challenge done to get the book mount. So even if you don't play Rogue, you don't really have to know too much about the class in order to get the challenge done. And hopefully this guide makes it a little bit easier for you. So first things first, these are going to be the talents that you're going to go with. I've seen some other guides go with Shuriken Tornado instead of Master of Shadows, but I think generally Master of Shadows is just more consistent and it worked for me the entire fight, so I don't see any reason to go with anything else. As far as items go, I didn't really do anything crazy. I have pretty much all Shadowlands items. The only thing is that you want to try and find two gem slots specifically. And the reason for this is you're going to want to get the Kraken's Eye of Agility and Leviathan's Eye of Agility. They're going to give the full amount of agility. So you're going to get seven and six, and that's going to increase your damage a ton in this fight. I didn't really have any free gem slots, so what I did for this is I crafted a Kyanite ring and I crafted a Soul Stone ring. Both of these rings are going to give you random stats and a gem slot. So if you don't have anything, try and look at those on the auction house. Specifically the ones that also have versatility. Versatility is going to be your best friend as a rogue and specifically in this fight as well. For the most part, as far as enchants go, you want to be fully enchanted for Shadowlands stuff. So you want to have primary stats plus 30 on your chest. You also want to have versatility on your rings and you want to have that 15 agility on your boots. As far as weapons, you're going to want the Celestial Guidance on your main hand, Sinful Revelation on your offhand. The cape enchant doesn't really matter too much, but you might as well, if you're going to get it, get the 20 stamina and 30 avoidance enchant. As for consumables, there's going to be a good amount you can get. You're going to want to get the Veiled Augment runes. You're going to want to get Steak a la Mode as your food. You're going to want to get Spectral Flask of Power. And you're also going to want to get Shadow Core Oil. On top of that, when you have Shadow Core Oil, you're going to want to get the Potion of Phantom Fire just for a bonus potion. So I'm going to get to the fight in a second here, but as a last piece of advice, I would say try and get through the first phase of the fight without consumables, and then once you get to the second phase, you're going to really need those. So if you don't want to spend a ton of money, you should be able to get through the first phase pretty easily without consumables once you get it down, but get through that without consumables, and then go crazy with all the consumables on phase two. The only reason I say that is because I know for a fact that I can get past phase 1 now without any consumables, and while I was learning the fight, I feel like I wasted a lot of money on that, and I really wish I would have saved that money and got past my training phase just without consumables. In phase 2, however, way way different. You're going to need consumables for sure. You can maybe try and get past a certain part that I'll talk about in a little bit without consumables, but for the most part, you're going to need consumables no matter what to beat the second phase. Now we'll get into the actual fight, and I'm going to break it down pretty simply for you, so you can use specific abilities at specific times. One thing to keep in mind for the first phase is you're going to want instant poison and mind-numbing poison, and then for the second phase, you're going to want instant poison and crippling poison. Very, very important. So the fight starts out with Xylem in his frost phase. There's going to be the Eye of Eternity sending out four beams from the middle of the room. Do not touch the beams, first of all. They will kill you pretty much instantly, so do not do it. As far as his frost bolts go, try and interrupt these whenever possible with kick. You can also stun him, but watch out for stun DRs. Two big things to keep in mind throughout the fight is that Shadow Dance does heal you, and you can also use Crimson Vial throughout the fight to try and heal up. Eventually he gets to a certain point where he's going to teleport across the room and he's going to stun you and chain you up with all these icicles around you. Do not try to walk into these or past these, they're going to kill you instantly. Just shadow step to the furthest one you can see and then run out of there. Otherwise it's going to kill you in about 5 seconds. Because shadow step is so important to get out of that little blizzard icicle thing, keep in mind that you want to save shadow steps only for that. You don't want to use shadow steps to get to him. You don't want to do anything besides using shadow steps to get out of the icicles. Once you're out of those icicles, run back to him and try and interrupt him and stun him as soon as possible so that he doesn't keep casting frost bolts on you. Eventually after that you're going to get to a point where he disappears and there's a bunch of shades of Archmage Xylem all over the room. You're going to want to kill one of these and they're going to pop up a bubble. 
bubble is going to heal you, so you want to stay in that for a decent amount of time if you're low. If you're outside of these bubbles, you're going to take too much damage. You don't really want to be outside of the bubbles. Also, if they get off a cast and you're near the Shades of Xylem, they are going to punt you away, so you want to kill them before they can do that, or interrupt them, or stun them, whatever you want to do there. I would say that you can also Shadow Step during this phase. Try and do it sparingly to just get from one person to the next, but you can also use Shadow Step here. But the main goal of this phase is Xylem is casting a little spell. Don't really know what it is, but it's going to one-shot you eventually. He's in a little sparkly tornado that you can either see in front of you or you can see a yellow dot on your map. So you want to kill the shades, get inside of their bubbles to heal, shadow step to the next one, kill that one, get inside of the bubble, and then shadow step close to Xylem. Once you're close enough, you can get him out of this little spell or whatever he's doing and start fighting him normally again. Once he's out of that first darkness phase, he's going to transition to an arcane phase. And there's really only two things you got to worry about here. The first thing is going to be draw power. It's going to be a channeled spell towards the Eye of Eternity in the middle of the room. You want to interrupt it, stun, blind, whatever you have to do. Don't let him get any ticks of this off. If he does, it's going to be way harder to complete the fight. He gains a lot of haste and it just makes him do way more damage. Second thing is going to be these shadow meteors. They're going to come from behind him and they're going to go towards the way that he is facing. But it's going to be a channeled spell. So all you got to do is just dodge these and try and do damage while he's channeling it. They do do a lot of damage. So you want to really avoid these. And also sometimes you can get hit by the shadow meteors and bumped into the beam. So just really, really do your best to try and avoid these. At the end of the arcane phase, he's going to do another darkness phase. You already know what to do there. Shadow step to the other shades, kill them, step in the bubbles, get close to him, and get him back outside. After that phase, you're going to get a mix of both arcane and frost. So you're going to have to interrupt the frost bolts, make sure you're doing that. Shadow step outside of the icicles, run back to him. If he casts his arcane blast or whatever it is, it's not really super important to interrupt, so just ignore those. Uh, interrupt draw power, very, very important, and dodge those shadow balls. And at that point, it's just kind of a rinse and repeat. You do the same thing over and over, and eventually you should be able to get to phase two. You're going to get to phase two at about 10% of his health. So try and save Shadow Dance for Phase 2. You're going to need a ton of damage for this phase. It's going to be very, very important that you have as much damage as possible. So once you're at Phase 2, be sure to switch your Poison to Crippling Poison. This is very, very important. I messed up a bunch of times because I didn't switch over my Poisons, but this is probably one of the most important things you can do. So this phase, for the most part, is a huge DPS check. And what's going to happen is Xylem is going to summon a huge Void Walker. The Void Walker is going to come towards you and spawn Void Zones where he's standing. Eventually the Void Zones get bigger and bigger, and eventually they will take up the platform. They do a ton of damage, and you cannot survive if you're standing in them. What the Void Walker is also going to do throughout the fight is he's going to channel a beam on you. When you get the beam, run as far away as possible because at the end of the channel, it's going to spawn three smaller Voidwalkers. They're going to go towards him and he's going to heal up if the Voidwalkers touch him. So what you want to do is you want to run away as far as possible and then press Shuriken Storm, Shuriken Storm to get full combo points. And then you're going to press Symbols of Death and Black Powder. And you're just going to do this over and over. Shuriken Storm, Shuriken Storm, Symbols of Death, Black Powder. Shuriken Storm, Shuriken Storm, Black Powder, Shuriken Storm, Shuriken Storm, Black Powder. You get the point. You do it over and over, eventually, until they're dead. Or if they get too close, you can also press Shadow Dance, try and cheap shot them, or do something to kill them. But you do not want them to get to the boss. This is the specific reason why you're going to want as much damage as possible, and also why you're going to want Crippling Poison. So at this point, once you kill the Void Walkers and you're back on the boss, he's going to run towards you. So you want to go in that corner pocket where the edge of the platform and the edge of the Void Zone are. You're going to want to stand there and watch very closely where the Void Zone is going because at a certain point it stops moving and you're going to want to take advantage of that as much as possible. If it's not moving, do not move yourself. Don't keep moving the boss because that's just going to make it way less efficient. 
and eventually you're going to corner yourself. So get in that corner pocket and move as slowly away from the void zone as possible to be as efficient as possible and eventually you're going to get enough damage to get him down. But if you move a little bit faster or if you aren't as efficient as possible, you're going to run into the other side of the void zone and you're going to trap yourself and just cause yourself to wipe. Oh, also the boss will enrage at 10% no matter what. So you have to use evasion here to dodge all of his attacks, but at that point you're pretty close to being done with the entire fight, so really good job at this point. Some tips for this fight I would say is right when the fight starts, use everything right away. Use shadow dance, shadow blades, use drums, use potions, anything you have available besides symbols of death, use it right away because that's just going to give you more time to refresh into the fight. You're going to get to use blades again, you're going to get to use a bunch of things over again. So try and use these as soon as possible, pop everything, and then slowly just work them down as normal. Also, as a general rule of thumb throughout the fight, make sure slice and dice is up, and then from there make sure rupture is up, and then after that you could spam eviscerates as much as you want. Also, just to get a little bit more basic, maybe you've never played Rogue in your life, you're going to want to use Backstab to generate combo points, and then eventually use a combo point ability like Slice and Dice, Eviscerate, etc. If you're in Shadow Dance, that is going to be your burst time, and you're going to use Shadow Strike instead of Backstab. Also, as a final note, I didn't really touch on it, but Cloak of Shadows is there. You can use it as a last resort. It's not needed or required for the fight at all. But if you run into a problem where you're taking too many frost bolts to the face, or it's really good for the darkness phase in phase one, it's also really good for killing void walkers that are getting too close to the boss and getting into the void zone. You can kill them, run back out. But uh, besides that, you don't have to use it, but it does help you a lot. So keep in mind to use it sparingly. And uh, yeah, that's uh, my last note. Besides that, I don't have too much for you guys. I would say the last part of the fight is very, very DPS intensive. You have to have a ton of DPS. So work on your rotation, work on all that, and try and be as efficient as possible with those void zones. I know that was a huge issue for me at first. But besides that, if you have any questions, I always answer all the questions in the comments. So uh, yeah, you guys have a good rest of the day and hopefully you get your armor and your book mount and everything you want in life. And uh, see you later. Bye.